Right, let's talk about the graph editor. The graph editor is the single most important uh, aspect of learning animation and it's the single most complicated thing to master when you're doing it for the first time. You should by now have watched the theory video on the graph editor. That will help make sense of all of this. But we've got the animators two-way split here. You can find it by going panels, layouts, three panes, split top. And then down here, you should have the graph editor. If you don't, just go panels, panel, graph editor. And there it is. Now, there's nothing showing up there because we don't have an object and we don't have any curves. But if I go ahead and create a cube, create polygon primitives cube, make sure that interactive creation is turned off. And let's move this cube over here to one side of the grid and press S. And then let's move to frame 99 to the other side of the grid and press S. Actually, we don't need to press S because we've got um, auto key turned on. And if I press A here in the graph editor, I will A for all so I can see all my curves. And I press play, you'll see that that cube is now traveling across the grid uh, in a particular way. And I would describe that as speeding up and slowing down. And that's what it's doing. It's slowly speeding up and get, picking up speed and then slowing down. And what the graph editor does is it calculates time down here in the x-axis and distance up here in the y-axis. So this is the distance the ball is traveling and this is the time it is taking to get there. And you can see that in the beginning, it's traveling quite a small amount of distance in quite a lot of time. But here in the middle, it's traveling quite a lot of distance in quite a small amount of time. And that's why in this bit here, it speeds up and then slows down. This is what's called a spline curve. This is pretty much a standard animation curve. You're going to use this a lot. But look what happens if I take this curve. I'm just going to select Translate X because that's the only one we're interested in here. That's this direction here, this um, uh, yellow arrow. If I select this curve, I'm drag selecting it now, which means I'm literally drawing an imaginary box around it using my mouse. And if I go to flat tangents there, now look what happens. Now the cube will travel at a constant rate. No slow in, no slow out, because it's traveling at a constant speed and that curve is completely flat. The time and the distance are on a straight, flat curve. So this cube will appear to travel uh, at a continual rate. And we can do um, all kinds of things with this cube. Let's take it back to the uh, spline. So if I drag select that and then spline it. Oh, yeah, why is it not working? OK, there we go. Um, that got me back to my slow in and slow out. But let's try a few other things. So let's try going to frame 49. That's the halfway point. And actually, let's try. Let's go to frame 30, 25. Set a keyframe every second. 49, and then 73. That will set a keyframe every second. Now let's just try moving this up here and that there, and then this here. What do you think is going to happen? The answer is the ball is going to travel forwards, backwards, and then forwards again. And we know that because of the graph editor. You, we can see here the ball travels, whoops, let me just press stop. It travels forwards here because it's going forwards in distance, then back in distance down here, and then forwards again. And we can tell all of that just by looking at the graph editor. And there are other things we can do. I can drag select these keyframes, delete them, so I go back to my straight curve. And I can drag select that. And I can change this to stepped curves. That's this button here. Oh, no, it's not. What am I talking about? There it is. Is that stepped curves? Yeah, there we go. That's stepped curves. I should have the help button on. In theory, Maya should tell you what it is. There we go, step tangents. Funnily enough, it only works when you're using the mouse. I'm actually using a Wacom tablet, which is why mysteriously it doesn't allow me to use the help function. I have no idea why. It's one of the many weirdnesses of Maya. Uh, but if you use the mouse, then the help button does turn up. So the step tangent gives you a kind of old-fashioned 2D um, 
held drawing effect. So what it's doing here, Maya is holding the ball in the same place or the cube in the same place until click, it suddenly transfers over there. And you use these curves when you want to shoot a pose test, when you just want to show the director the main poses. It's typically used with character performance when you're animating a character shot or an acting shot and you want it done on stepped curves, pose to pose, show the director what the key acting poses are. The director signs off on that, agrees it, and then you start to do the blends between the poses. Um, so that is stepped curves. And that is the essence of the graph editor. There's not a lot more to it than that. Let me just change uh, back to spline. But it does take a while to get the hang of it. And when you're learning Maya, if you are feeling confused in the graph editor, don't feel alone. Everybody has trouble mastering this, especially if, like me, you weren't very good at maths at school. But you will get there in the end. I promise you, just stick with it, and um, you, you will master the graph editor in time. But it is the place where you learn to master timing and spacing, uh, time and distance, and where you can uh, move and manipulate these keyframes around in order to change the way your animation works. So an incredibly powerful tool, does take a while to master it, but trust me, you will get there in the end.